I was legally blind when I woke up and my little sister was at my bedside and I was so blind that I couldn't see who she was. Demi Lovato details her 2018 overdose and the lasting impact it's had on her health. I'm really lucky to be alive. Um, my doctors said that like I had five to ten more minutes um, and had my assistant not come in, I wouldn't be here today. Episode one and two of the I Love Me Singer's four-part docu-series, Dancing with the Devil, dropped Tuesday on YouTube, and the 28-year-old singer is getting candid about the night she overdosed on heroin. Her objective was to clear the air, to tell her story, to speak her truth. Demi explains that she was celebrating her friend and creative director, Danny Vitale's birthday at a bar in LA. At around 12.30 a.m., Demi invited everyone back to her house, where Danny says they drank sparkling sparkling water and danced on the roof until they all got tired and went home. I said I was going to bed, but the reality was I had called my dealer over. The next morning, it was the singer's then assistant, Jordan Jackson, who found her unconscious in her bedroom. I thought that she was just drunk or hungover, so I kind of started to like nudge her a little bit like, hey, like, let's get up now, like it's time to go. She wasn't really moving. She was like drooling. Jordan said she called Demi's security before then calling 911. The ambulance came. They came upstairs to her room. They got their Narcan out, trying to really just bring her back to life. Um, there was one point where she turned blue. I was just like, oh, she's dead for sure. Yeah, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And while Demi survived her OD, it didn't come without complications. I actually don't think people realize how bad it actually was. I had three strokes. I had a heart attack. I suffered brain damage from the strokes. Um, I can't drive anymore and I have blind spots in my vision. She gets into, you know, how bad that night of the overdose really was, <laughs> how scary it was. I think people will learn for the first time how truly life or death that situation was. How tough was that for her to relive, for her family to relive? What were those interviews like? Tough. I mean, all of the interviews were really heavy. Um, this film, you know, Dancing with the Devil, ultimately is about a moment in time, obviously, that horrible incident where the overdose occurred and ultimately how we got there. You know, it's ultimately this like nucleus and you peel back the layers of the onion in it and it all leads you uh, in a non-linear way to this moment. And I think a lot of the people that I sat down with hadn't properly spoken about it in the open to this level at any point. E.T. chatted with Michael D. Ratner, the doc's director, and he revealed why it was so important to Demi to lay it all out on the table. She um, leaned into it and anything that made her uncomfortable, she understood the power of that. And, uh, you know, we say it right there in the film, you're not defined by your lowest moments. And sharing those lowest moments um, should ultimately allow and invite people to talk about theirs and start a dialogue. And, you know, most importantly, Demi's not telling anybody how to live their life. Everybody's got their own unique situations. She's simply telling you what she's been through, her unique journey. And, um, you know, I think that will provide an opportunity for others to do the same. It's not very common that you'd see someone with a drug-related overdose with this degree of multi-organ failure that would come out of it relatively unscathed and do as well as she has. It's like a nice reminder that that it wasn't my time, you know, that there was more life to be lived.